Art Nouveau came about because of the belief of 19th century European designers that the urban world that was created during the Industrial Revolution lacked beauty. While these designers agreed with William Morris's desire to unify the designing art, the different designing arts and make the world more aesthetically pleasing, they did not agree that they should always look back to past art styles. Instead, 19th century European designers believed that the best way forward was to create an entirely new style. Art Nouveau, or New Art, is a term that describes the different design movements that were active in the late 19th century throughout Europe and the United States. The main principle of Art Nouveau is that this style must be compatible with all situations, not just unique to one basic scenario. This interconnectivity of style serves to unify the chaoticness that the designers saw in the surrounding urban environment. Over in the United States, artists did not feel confident enough to begin using new styles, and as a result, they would look back to Europe and France for inspiration and guidance. Young artists would draw inspiration from French posters such as Le Maîtres de Affiche and British magazines such as The Studio or The Yellow Book. As a result, when Harper's Magazine published its first poster, it was designed by the French artist Eugène Grasset. Due to its immense success of Grasset's use of the ornamental Ornament, emblematic of the Art Nouveau style, fierce competition broke out between established magazine companies. This uh, competition led to the creation of over 7,000 new periodicals. However, few American artists were able to create the visuals that the public desired, and this led to a majority of companies hiring expensive European designers such as Grasset. However, the American people became enraptured with the French art style of Art Nouveau, so much so that when designer Edward Penfield traveled to Paris to study art, he was appointed as the art editor of Harper and Brothers in 1891 upon returning to the U.S. Penfield's coverage were part of a much larger social movement that portrayed women less as objects of sexual desire and more as their own persons. One example of this is his cover for Stern's Bicycles. Due to the creation of safety bicycles, or the modern bike, um, women looked to the bicycle as a symbol of their growing freedom and assertion as active and capable members of society. However, while American art was leaning towards viewing women as their own persons and not just as objects of sexual desire, a Paris-based designer named Alphonse Mucha continued to portray women as objects of sex. For his bicycle design, he drew a scantily clad woman leaning on an anvil while seated on an obscured bike. Her dress is in the process of falling off as she stares blankly into space. The woman's hair is tied up in the style, in Le Style de Mucha, a way of drawing hair that he had pioneered and had eventually become a common building block for the Art Nouveau styles in Paris. Alphonse Mucha was heavily inspired by Eugene Grasset and his career started moving. Started after he moved to Czechoslovakia because of a lucky run-in with actress Sarah Bernhardt. Mucha worked in the print shop where Bernhardt had ordered a rush print of a poster. This encounter led to Mucha's signature style, which heavily featured a background of decorative flat patterns with elongated human fingers, figures. His style emphasized the rhythm of contour lines and rich floral decorations. His most famous piece, Absinthe, Absinthe Rob Betty, Rabette, displays the woman, displays his idea of a perfect woman, the ideal image of beauty and open sexuality. France Nouveau was, however, not the only style that intrigued the American public. The heavy contour lines, flat colors, and symmetrical composition of Japanese Art Nouveau worked their way into the American public. This is evident with the works of J.J. Gould and his cover for Lippincott's. One of the main players in bringing Japanese media to Europe was a man named Arthur Liberty, who ran a shop that sold Japanese silks, furniture, carpets, embroideries, and even British-made goods that mimic the Japanese style. One of the most prominent designers of the 1890s was Will H. Bradley. He was largely self-taught and worked with the Euro European style of Art Nouveau. Bradley's poster for the chapbook highlights the difference between art posters, such as Bradley's poster, and the hundreds and thousands of generic chromolithograph posters that were published every year. Originally only used for avant-garde journals, art posters eventually became the norm of advertising. Outspoken about the low quality of typefaces, Bradley joined the American Type Founders Association. His career was highlighted by his ability to marry the different styles of Art Nouveau with the arts and crafts movement. Over in England, growing competition led to an increase in the need for eye-catching graphics. This need inspired Thomas Barrett, Barrett the advertiser for Paris Transparent Soap, to repurpose Sir John Everett 
Malias's painting a child's world into a poster. With Malias's permission, the lettering pear soap, a bar of soap, and a soap bubble were added to the lithograph of the already well-known image. The use of traditional paintings and advertising added cachet to the already to an otherwise mass-marketed and easily skippable process as soap. The first art show for Art Nouveau posters was hosted in the Westminster Aquarium in London. The show exhibited both London and French styles of Art Nouveau, but had many more French pieces on display. Henri de Toulouse-Larec was placed as the head of the French section, which showcased the artworks of Jules Charette, uh, Theophile Stylin, and Toulouse-Larec himself. Uh, Jules Tarek was the most was one of the most influential poster designers during the Art Nouveau period in France. Originally working as a typesetter, Charette became convinced that color lithography would replace traditional letter printing, so he created a way that enabled him to print in a large variety of hues, values, and intensities. Because of this, he is credited with dramatically enhancing the recognition of chromolithography. Charette was influenced by both Japanese art and the 18th century French Rococo. He used French Rococo after a string of defeats in the Franco-Persian War, as well as the end of industrial power, because people turned to their age-old leadership in the arts after they had lost their leadership in everything else. Uh, Charette's Rococo designs were solely French and celebrated their national achievements. The French Rococo movement is credited with being the first decorative movement that unified the decorative as well as the dynamic composition in fine art. However, Schliemann uh, was influenced by the simple styles of Japanese prints. His most famous poster, Cabaret du Chat Noir, was one of the posters made for the first cabarets located in Montmartre. Uh, Schliemann was a member of the Art à la Rue movement, or Art on the Streets. This movement took up the cause of the everyday working class. Stylin, Schliemann? I don't know how to pronounce it. Like William Morris, believed that the designs could and should have more of an impact on society than simply serving for beautification. As Montmartre grew and over 100 cafe concerts opened, these venues, which combined nightclubs, theaters, dance halls, and bars, made up the majority of Paris's growing nightlife. Two of the most famous cafe concerts were the Moulin Rouge and the Moulin de la Galette. These clubs were located in renovated windmills and were frequented by artist and designer Henri de Luz Tellerac. Henri managed to capture the atmosphere of sexual excitement and freedom in these clubs with his poster design. Henri's art style featured free-flowing lines and bold use of color. His style was influenced by Japanese print aesthetics, which matched the interior decor of the Moulin Rouge. Moving back to England, Arthur Beardsley was one of the most influential, designer, influential designers in England. Featured on the first ever cover of the studio, Beardsley's design portrayed a mysterious forest. This harmonized with the French symbolists. The symbolist, a group of poets that included Stéphane Mallarmé, advocated for art forms that would tempt the senses and tantalize the mind. They believed in art for art's sake, focusing on the aesthetic pleasure being the main point in, of creating a piece rather than a hidden message or meaning. Because of this belief, symbolists avoided the use of literal descriptions in their poetry and other forms of art. Malarm claimed that describing an object will remove about 75% of the possible total enjoyment one would receive when reading the poem. Um, however, around 1910, the decline of Art Nouveau began. Aldolf Luz attributed the decline to the evolution of society. Uh, he stated that the more advanced a civilization Civilization became would minimize they would minimize the amount of like elaborate decoration in their environment. However, the death of Art Nouveau was mainly caused by societal change during the First World War 